Stop. Wrong. Stop. 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 Wrong. You said it was absolutely wrong. No, so no, no. I'm but there's talking no. about the thing that you think are part of rules of the game. So no, but that's not true. About? Calling into question somebody's right to retain an attorney is not okay. And the judge called him out on that one time. And a f***ing first-year lawyer would f know that. So do you think that was intentional or do you think the prosecution is just uh oh they just flubbed up a little bit? I don't, like do you think I don't, it was intentional? I don't I'm not I don't have enough trial experience to know that because the second time oh, he did that that aren't God. just like answer the simple question. It's a simple question. I, I don't know what the answer is because he did a he did this a second right. time where he I'm gonna write this down because you you, uh, you are Okay what is a direct question? I'll give you a yes or no. I, hold, okay. hold on hold on you got you gotta bear down on that because you keep rolling your the, I the say problem that shit, is because you no keep rolling. The My name is Connor. I run a YouTube channel named Counterpoints. I identify as centrist, center right. I'm a Marine Corps veteran, a law enforcement veteran, and a fucking geek. And I like arguing on panel shows and yelling at people. So you know, we share that in common. Cool. Okay. What do you got for us? So uh, one of the things that uh, people were kind of mauling about in chat, I think we were talking about like the judicial system last time we spoke, something like that. And part of the problem is like we always, you know, tend to agree or whatever. But one of the things that I brought up as a random idea mm -hmm. was basically like whether or not we needed a contentious legal system. And part of like why we hate lawyers or why cops hate lawyers i guess uh -huh. and uh ironically it's the fucking prosecution this time that i'm finding just like absolutely fucking abhorrent and so i, I kind of wanted to bring up some of the things that i thought were like ridiculous and also how kind of like maybe if we didn't do this for defense attorneys i could understand that but maybe the prosecution should follow a non-combative strategy so i just kind of wanted to run that by you see if you could pick any holes into that kind of shit yeah if you want to go for it <clears throat> Yeah, so um, particularly the thing that pissed me off is the fact that, like, there are things that are known. Um, you know, DAs and prosecutors, they work with law enforcement all the time. They mm -hmm. deal with use of force cases all the time. Um, they deal with adrenaline and people, uh, you know, flubbing their stories and fucking up and using their emotional intelligence in order to not get killed. Uh, and, and all of these things, like, through prior case law have been taken into account and they've been, like, ameliorated in order to say, like, hey, uh, you know, despite this being not what we view as ideally moral, it's understandable based under the circumstances because we have adrenaline and violence and people getting killed and all that kind of shit, so we're going to go ahead and give uh, some level of latitude. I didn't see any of that shit in the fucking prosecution. Mm -hmm. um, and what I mean by that is, like, oh, well, he just tried to kick you in the face. He didn't have a gun. Um, oh, uh, Grosskritz or whatever, he, he actually, he didn't shoot anything at you. Mm -hmm. He was just in the, in the act of, you know, whatever of like pulling the gun. Mm -hmm. And then unfortunately this like feeds this whole fucking cycle where like the news people can be like, oh, uh, out of all the people who Kyle Rittenhouse dealt with, actually nobody shot at him. Mm -hmm. And then you have a bunch of fucking normie dipshits fucking doing that. So anyway, well, so, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I'm going to be, <laughs> this whole argument might just be me repeating this phrase. Um, mm -hmm. And it's probably going to actually completely build upon our prior argument. So to summarize mm -hmm. our prior argument, I said that I think that the bit, the way that we arrive at good things the best is to have two polar forces that counteract Stop one another. Your um, because usually the, the truth or the best outcome is going to be somewhere in the middle of these two sides fighting with each other is how I tend to feel. So when I hear things like um, when you talk to like defense lawyers, like they have like a highly antagonistic attitude or, or it's mutually like antagonistic between like defense lawyers and, and police or whatever. That's good. Mm -hmm. I think they should be. They should hate each other because their jobs are like diametrically opposed to what they should be doing. So I've seen a lot of people point out, and I even laughed at like some of the things that um, were said in this case. Like, well, like for for one of the lines of questions, like you didn't know he was going to shoot you, right? And Rittenhouse, like, well, he was pointing a gun. He's like, sure, he was pointing the gun at you, but he didn't, you didn't know he's going to shoot you, right? Right? It seems like a ridiculous line of questioning. However, the prosecution's job is not to be looking out for Rittenhouse's best interest. It's not to present the case in a way where Rittenhouse seems reasonable. Um, that's just, that's not what their goal is. That's not what their goal is, that's not what their job is. The, their job there is to try to sell the idea that Kyle Rittenhouse either acted with forethought, he knew that he was going there to kill somebody, or that his life wasn't in danger and he was still <laughs> using lethal force to kill somebody. Um, these are the jobs, th this is the job of the prosecution to make that case. It's gonna be the job of the defense to say, okay, well, hold on, like, was it reasonable to assume he'd act for whatever, right? That's just, that's just what these two forces are attempting to do. So I, I don't view it as being like a bad thing. Thing. I think it's just the two sides doing their job. Right. But then my frustration with this would be like, th this is all so apparent, um, at least to me anyways. Mm -hmm. um, it's also it's also apparent to me because we have footage. 
That's mm-hmm. why. Yeah. Right? Whereas if you took a lot of the descriptions, like, oh, um, Kyle was charged by an un- unarmed man mm-hmm. who uh, had, like, psychological issues, um, but ultimately, like, you know, he was unarmed. And he actually intentionally separated himself from the, intentionally separated from himself from the group. And then that resulted in this guy's death and this, that, the other. And after that, when other people tried to chase him in order to apprehend him or whatever, um, you know, basically he, he turned around and he killed those people. Mm-hmm. Now, the, because the narrative is so dry and it's lacking so much physical context, I, as a prosecutor, seriously feel comfortable that I could even argue that and get a conviction, um, like, like, like all that kind of stuff. But because we have the footage, it shows so clearly that this is like, um, you know, like, like a case of self-defense where the, the um, what would I say, like the prosecution basically jumping past things it knows to be true in order to obtain a conviction is frustrating for me. And it's not, it's not, it's not just frustrating. It's a question of whether or not this is the way the system should work. Well, so here, so let's, let's go back mm-hmm. to, so <clears throat> the whole beat, so I don't know enough to say this. I'm not going to say this. So one thing I think say is it. like, the mo- well, say I, it. I don't know. This, this is Twitch. Like, Nobody I, knows what okay. they're talking about. The, the best part of a trial, the most important part of a trial, okay, uh, is the pretrial. It's the discovery process. Now, we might say like, oh, yeah, we've got all the footage. You don't know that. I don't know that. This is the whole point of like, or one of the big parts of taking something to trial is the discovery process where everybody gets to sit down. At, we get to say like, where is all the footage? Do we need to subpoena these people to get more footage? Is there more information we can get? What witnesses can we bring in? Who do we talk to? What deposition? getting all of the information on the table so that we can lay down everything and see what clearly happened. And it might be the case that in the process of going through that discovery process, maybe there is footage that would dramatically change the way that we would view this. So I've maintained from the beginning that from all the footage that I've seen, it it looks really open and shut to me, like a very clear case of self-defense. That's what it looks like to me. However, it is highly improbable, but still possible, that there are some scenarios where Rittenhouse was acting in a way prior to Rosenbaum charging him, they could actually really make me call into question the self-defense aspect. For instance, let's say Kyle was acting in an incredibly threatening manner prior to Rosenbaum chasing him. If that was the case, uh, then I think it's a little bit harder because generally, if you're in the if you're in the commission of a felony, especially with a weapon or certain felonies, you can't you don't have the right to claim self defense afterwards. If I break into your house and I you know I've got like a knife with me and then you shoot and, and kill me and then I or you shoot to kill me and then I stab you and kill you, I can't claim self defense. I'm in the middle of like felony burglary. I can't I can't do that. <laughs> my my self defense doesn't stand. You know, so I think that. If that is the case that we're taking this to trial, it's the prosecution's job to make that argument. It's the defense's job to show with an affirmative defense that, hey, yeah, he shot and killed two people, but it was self-defense, and we're going to show you why. Both sides just have to argue their case at that point. As long as they're not, like, breaking the law or breaking procedure to do it, I think that it's the onus is on both to, to present their arguments as best they can. Yeah. Okay. So, um, don't, don't let me forget this. Uh, but basically there, there is something, hold on, I'm gonna write it down actually. Um, so legal thing that might actually justify it. Um, but the, yeah. So, so my, my frustration with that perspective is that like the things that are known, um, in this field, both in the prosecution. So it would be one thing if you were saying like, Hey, the prosecution actually has evidence that corroborates a narrative that goes up against it. Or goes up against Rittenhouse, but it doesn't seem like they have one, so they're fabricating one. And that's where... You know, well, but what if they... When you say fabricating, that's a really uh-huh. strong word. Oh, ha- and I, I can back it. <laughs> okay, yeah. So be careful, because trying to say, like... like Because the argument right now is, was Rittenhouse's de- like life... Did he have a reason to believe that his life was in danger, and his uh-huh. only response was to kill the person, right? These are the... These are are, in my opinion, relatively subjective things. And to call those into question or argue on the other side, I wouldn't call that fabricating a story. I would say that you are presenting a narrative that you hope is more compelling than the defense's narrative, right? So I'd be, I just, I don't like that word fabric, unless you can say like, oh, well, here's where they invented some facts or here's where they submitted evidence that was made up or whatever, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, ba- basically the, this would be my, uh, my frustration is because these things aren't unknown. Uh, maybe they're unknown to individual lawyers. Wait, but what things not- aren't unknown? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll list those out. Oh, yeah, okay. So, yeah, so these things aren't unknown. They might be unknown to, like, individual lawyers, especially, like, 
uh, rookie lawyers, but they wouldn't be unknown to lawyers uh, of like a, a certain level of, of uh, pedigree, especially the ones who'd be in charge of homicide cases. So for instance, like during the case where the, the prosecution was like, hey, um, you know, you said that Rosenbaum had a gun. I feel like I've outpaced But him he didn't. And you lied about that to the crowd or something like that. Mm -hmm. There's already there's already like so much context within here that that like affords a certain amount of psychological latitude. Number no! one. Uh, right. Sorry. Okay, go ahead. Uh, no, I mean, you, you can if you I just, like, want. When you say mm -hmm. psychological latitude, again, mm -hmm. I think that we just view this totally differently. And by the way, you might have a better view of the criminal justice system than I do. Um, I, maybe mm -hmm. I maybe I because I, I, I don't really know. I haven't been a part of this. But from my understanding. The prosecution is not there to provide latitude. Their goal is to impeach his character, right? Let's say that it's the case that as the prosecution, you can prove that Kyle made several false statements over and over and over and over again. You might be able to call other parts of his testimony into question, especially if it's not corroborated by anyone else or if people are claiming the opposite, right? This is a totally valid thing to do, in my opinion, as a prosecutor. This is your goal. You're not there to provide psychological latitude. Psychological latitude is literally the, the defense. You're trying to say that he felt like his life was in danger and mm -hmm. therefore, uh, you know, he needed to kill somebody in self-defense. That's the defense's case to make. It's not up to the prosecution to be mindful of that. Sure. Okay. So let me, let me give you some ammunition before I do anything. Um, okay. That way, like, we don't forget it. So there's actually, you, you might be aware of this footage, but there was actually a video like maybe two weeks prior to the incident where Kyle uh, basically- Wish he had a gun to shoot the people at the mall or whatever, right? Right, and uh -huh. I don't know if he—I don't know if he specifically. I think it was like a CBS that was getting looted. Yeah, and I, I don't think he specifically said like I, so I can shoot people. I think he I said, think he I, said wish had my, "I wish I had my I wish I had my AR fifteen or something." I think he said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for all we know, that could play into the LARPy fantasy that we saw. So, uh -huh. so there, there's like a certain amount of ways that that can play. But one of the things that somebody brought up on Twitter, probably one of the few stupid things that I didn't see on Twitter today, uh -huh. was the fact that there's a preclusion for the self-defense, uh -huh. uh, like like subparagraph in Wisconsin state law that actually says that if you in, if you put yourself in a situation intentionally in order to cause a homicide, uh -huh. then that would be you know that that would basically rob you of the ability to do self-defense sure. and so for me the if you were to argue like the prosecution needs the capacity in order to present that if they want to build a narrative saying that he's actually been playing you know planning this for a long time or whatever i think that's something that's arguable mm -hmm. but then i think that has to go up against like the totality of circumstances where the uh the prosecution or whatever is aware of other things they're aware of the fact that he's volunteering in the community. They're volunteer. They're, they're aware of the fact that he was doing first aid for protesters. They're aware of the fact that uh, yeah, but wait, that, none of that helps the prosecution's well, hold on, hold on, case. Hold on. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, but yeah, before you rip it up, I'm not trying to help the prosecution's case, by the way. Okay. Sure. So the because because basic and then here's here's the other thing too, they should be aware of prior case law in which like unarmed people were viewed as uh, threats of deadly force because they were trying to take a lethal weapon from a individual and, and especially with like footage to back it up. So I'm not saying that they need to like shit the bed and throw the case or whatever, but what I'm saying, what I am saying is, does this combative, because you're basically, what, what I'm hearing when you're making this argument is you're saying that the, the combative nature yields the best results and as a result, the prosecution is doing what it's supposed to do in order to yield like the most aggressive case possible. Mm -hmm. But when you predicate a case on the fact of like psychological and physiological things that are understandable by like science and history and like psychology and sociology and all that kind of stuff, and your conviction is predicated on things that can be explained by other facts that you should know about, especially Especially because you're part of the part of the industry, um, I'm not saying like. And th this is actually where I landed on it, so I want to present this to you. Is the defense attorney can be as shitty as they want because their their client's life is on the line, right? But I almost feel like the state, uh, much like in other avenues and in industries, should be held to a higher standard of conduct, where the prosecution should almost be unilaterally held to the standards of truth and fact. And that was kind of like, uh, you know, because I'm a centrist. That was like my centrist compromise that I kind of okay, came up with. Where these like, words are like ahead. truth and fact. I mean, like both sides mm -hmm. should be engaged in truth and fact, right? Are you familiar with the difference? Have you ever heard of the difference between like history and historiography? Historiography, um, I think? I, I've only heard you mention it. I've never actually heard it explained. Okay, so I think like history is like... I, I don't even know how you would define history. History is like stuff that's happened in the past, broadly speaking, right? So... When we do is history, it, um, is it is it the Twitch drama of the past? Sure, the Twitch drama of the past, right? Um, <laughs> I think historiography is 
when we tell a story, we are selecting certain facts, right? A anytime I give an accounting of anything, there's been some selection that's occurred there, right? If I tell you what happened during World War II, I'm not reporting every single individual that died. I'm not telling you what every single, right? It's usually I'm giving you a handful of actions across a handful of actors across a handful of years, right? We're making decisions on what facts we want to report, right? Sure. Yeah. So as long as both sides are being factually correct, they can, you can still tell totally different narratives with the same set of facts, or with, with the like same, I'm yeah, with arguably, like, if we both have the same set of facts to draw from, feels strong, we can tell, we, uh, ugh, sorry, we can tell dramatically different stories, depending on the narratives we want to spin, right? Narratives aren't necessarily false, they're just a, a way of accounting for the facts. Right, but at the same time, so let, let's focus on, like, a single fact so we don't, like, talk past each other a bunch. Um, so, so a single fact, uh, let, let's just focus on Rosenbaum. Let's not focus on anybody else. Okay. A single fact is that we have had uh, use of force cases for law enforcement and, uh, you know, self-defense cases for civilians mm -hmm. that have been predicated on a armed, uh, like an armed defender and an unarmed aggressor. Okay. Th this is, this has happened probably, it, it probably happens thousands of times per year let alone, you know, uh, le like basically like case law, uh, you know, basically being involved in the case alone. So you have to, you have to do it. Okay. So there's a certain, so there's a certain amount of precedent here where you could say like, okay, well, you know, the fact that this person is unarmed is actually completely irrelevant to whether or not self, de uh, self defense is a valid thing. And yet I see the prosecution. Uh, wait, hold on. I don't think that's um, true at all. Tell me. Um, I'm sure there have been cases where an unarmed person has attacked an armed person, and the armed person has gotten off on self-defense. Mm -hmm. mm. I guarantee you there have been cases that have gone the other way as well, where there is an armed person getting attacked by an unarmed person, and the armed person kills the unarmed person, and they don't get off on self-defense. I guarantee you that both of these, that those cases have gone both ways. It doesn't always go one way or the other. Oh, of course, and, and that's, but that's like... Um, so then your goal then, the, so your goal... We have the ability to discern, though. Yeah, but like the, the, that process of discerning, that's called trial, different right? Different things have been... If that, that's, that's where you go to trial to figure it out. You don't discern oh, those things by just looking prior, because obviously the defense is going to say, oh, well, this is like those cases, and the prosecution say, well, this is like the other cases, right? The, 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 the process of discernment is going to court and, and doing yeah, the but, trial. But, but this is where I would like unilaterally hold it on the prosecution because basically like there are, I, I don't know if I'm being like too vague to be understood or something. Um, but, but basically like there are like, um, psycho uh, psychological, physiological responses that mm -hmm. like most human beings undergo through during like stress sure. that, that readily explain like everything that, that's happened during this situation. That there's okay, also here like is, enough. I, I think this is where we're getting caught up. Okay. So yeah, it's what you're like telling me. These things mm -hmm. aren't descriptively true, like features and facts of the world. What you're giving me are mm -hmm. arguments that need to be made in court. It's like fair use, right? There, there isn't like a legal, like this is fair use. Fair use is a defense that you employ in court to defend copyright infringement, to say it's not copyright infringement. That's what fair use is. It's not like, a, look, this is fair use. Now we don't have to go to court. Fair use is my defense in court. When you say there are like psychological factors that can explain relations to, to or a relationship between like a, a defender and an attacker or whatever, right? That might be true, but oftentimes these are going to be things that need to be argued in court. That's not just like you look at a prime and it's like, oh, he was probably really stressed out. He was probably really threatened, so he killed him, you know, so boom, bada boom, it's done. This is what you have, this is the case you need to make either to a judge or a jury. Yeah, but wouldn't you, even with your analogy or whatever, wouldn't you concede that there's, like, uh, especially, um, you know, bigger corporations or whatever that violate IP law specifically so they can maintain, like, a nefarious brand? Like, Disney is a prime example of this. Games Workshop, somebody who I deal with all the time because I deal with Warhammer 40,000, they, they don't strike down non-fair uses of their intellectual property. They strike down everything and then they wait to see who has the balls to appeal their intellectual property disputes. And and like and that's the thing is like there's precedent um, for intellectual property where it, as long as your work is transformative, which like you know reactions and commentary are, as long as you're not just sitting there eating your fucking chips, or if you're just sitting there and fucking having your chair watch the product, then um, you know ba basically like there is precedent for this that's understandable outside of the courts that you don't need lawyers to relitigate. 
And, and that's kind of my point is like, you're saying like jurors need to fucking make this decision. Like, uh, oh God, this is why I'm not a Democrat. Uh, fuck jurors. Like most people are stupid as fuck. And they like, and again, like the, the consent, the thing that you said last time was like, well, we want defense attorneys to be able to give their uh, clients like a rigorous defense because we don't want people to get fucked over. Well, I'm saying this is like a unilateral disarmament of the prosecution because the state actually does have a vested interest in not just serving like random prosecutions so prosecutors can like go home and jerk off about how they have like a good stat uh like a good win streak or something like that or that they can get like a shitty conviction uh based off of shitty evidence because they like manipulated the jury and this is actually like where it was really frustrating for me if you'll indulge me one more story okay wait okay um, real quick There's so much of what you just said was so like let's say that we do think that the state is like a bias or, or a bad institution wouldn't that make mm -hmm. it all the more important then to have a jury so that we're not letting a single judge who is a representative of the state decide the outcome of our court cases? <laughs> like, um, it seems like everything you just said is a really yeah. good argument for why maybe we maybe it is a good idea to have a jury of like 12 random fucks in society rather than the state deciding the outcome of every single court case that we're now also arguing is biased or unfair, right? Yeah, okay, so I, I, just, uh, I just poked a hole in... Um, like a, an avenue of corruption mm -hmm. um, where like people because basically for me it's like well if somebody walks then that's obviously better because then if they're walking then the only harm is the original crime and the state hasn't committed an additional crime right um, but well, then they I might walk while having committed the crime as well right we don't know that right right and and that's where it probably could be used nepotistically where like a DA gets like a $10,000 you know check to like a Swiss account and he's like oh yeah I reviewed all the stats and the data and uh, based off of this we didn't proceed with the case so yeah there, there's definitely an avenue for abuse um not that the current uh system doesn't have an avenue for abuse but obviously that makes it ripe for abuse and nepotism the and, and i'm like trying to perfect the system on the fly so if you'll excuse me like the minor holes the the thing about it is though with like the prosecution is like so for instance like i would say that they, there's a decent amount of padding and bullshit that has nothing to do with statutes in this case it has nothing to do with the law it has nothing to do with justice it just has to do with the uh you know the the prosecution throwing enough shit into the fucking case that maybe they can get a conviction out of it. I mean, that, like that's, that's, that's the happening. that's the prosecutor's job, <laughs> of course, is to wait, bring wait, up wait. every. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so so hold on, because this like really rubs me wrong. Like, not that not that you're rubbing me wrong, because I understand. I can rub you wrong. It's okay. You're not gonna hurt my feelings. Go ahead. Okay, so like the you're being descriptive about the way that the system currently works, but you're not really like asking whether or not this is the way that the system. I think this is how work. it should work. The the state you, has the you onus. Think the to, state yeah. should make shit up in. No, or, like, wait, 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 no, no, hold on, me. be really careful. Uh, I never yeah. said anybody should make anything up or invent uh -huh. fact. Okay, but if you want to bring whatever you believe is relevant, as long as the judge admits it as evidence and it's legal, then it's uh -huh. that's your job to tell the jury a story to get your conviction. That's actually your job. The defense's job is to tell a better story to explain why the defendant acted the way they did so that they don't get a conviction. That's the job of both sides. Okay, okay, so let, let, let's barrel down because again, I don't, I don't want to get past it. Like, okay. So, so the, the thing about it is like very specifically with like, uh, you know, um, unarmed versus armed people, we have case precedent that fucking shows that like, you know, there's people who have, who have correct self-defense cases, even when they're armed and they're not armed. And yet we have a prosecutor who's trying to say like, oh, well, you had the better gun, therefore, did you really feel in danger? Oh, well, he was just pulling the pistol on you. Um, you know, okay, hold on, really real quick. I would danger? bet my life. I, I would bet yeah, my life before I, God and everyone else that uh -huh. whether or not one side is armed or not is going to be an essential part of any self-defense case. I would bet every dollar I own without even knowing the answer to that because I know I'm right on that. Whether okay. or not you have a firearm or not in a self-defense is, is prop might even be the most important part of a self-defense case the majority of the time. I guarantee you that is an essential part of figuring out whether or not a self-defense was justified or not. Let's, uh, let's add a couple of variables there. So what, uh, what do you have... Uh, when, um, basically the, uh, the fucking, the person who is armed uh -huh. has the weapon, they're not the aggressor, mm -hmm. the other person advances on them, mm -hmm. and then they start fighting over a lethal weapon. Uh -huh. What do you have there? Is Depen that it depends on the case. It depends on the case. Of course it depends on the, on the case. But at the same time, do you think it's like, it's okay when it's very clear that you basically have like that exact situation going on? I think the problem yet, is like, we just, we're disagreeing. Mm -hmm. Like what you just described literally mm -hmm. happened in, um, 
What was the name of the guy? He went over to a house to complain about the noise. And then afterwards, I think he walked back to his car. Two people from the house approached him. He warned them, I have a gun, stay away from me. They continued to approach. He said, I have a gun, stay away from me. They approached, and then he pulled out his pistol and he shot them and killed at least one of them. And that guy, he didn't get off on self-defense. He got, he got a conviction for... I don't know if it was second degree murder or what, but that he got fucked. He didn't he didn't have self defense, and he was armed, okay. and the other person wasn't. So I mean, like these cases what, can what go state, either way. Though? I don't know what's I don't remember what state. Okay, yeah, okay. So I understand that it can go either way, but then like there's certain there's certain so for instance like the the variables that we're, we're talking about here are they are understandable. So so like so for instance like. You if keep you, you keep saying they are understandable. They're not. Mm -hmm. This this is what you have to argue. You can't just like look what at like you, mean? you can't look at three uh -huh. YouTube videos and go like, oh yeah, clearly that's both. If it is now, okay, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll I can I'll bridge I'll bridge a little bit to you. Okay, there might be yeah. some cases where the video evidence is so fucking clear that this is yeah we this is fine right and prosecutors make those decisions all the time absolutely they do there are tons of prosecutors across the country that uh you know they'll get a case and they'll look at it or they'll decide if they're going to open charges or whatever and they'll look at all the evidence they're like you know what this is pretty cut and dry we're not going to press charges this is whatever and they don't do it because you have limited resources and you don't want to take every single person to court that absolutely happens right we can agree that that happens right but in this sure. case, of it's like a fucking riot. There's tons of conflicting video footage. There's tons of different claims being made. It is a highly political case. It's being looked at nationwide. What do you think the reaction would have been if the if the DA would have been like, you know what, we looked at the Rittenhouse shit, we saw a few of the YouTube videos, and eh, we think he's in the clear, right? Do you really think that that would have gone over well? Would that have been like a judicially responsible choice to make? Would it have been a politically responsible choice to make? Would it have been like... like it, there's so much that goes into whether or not you should prosecute these cases or not. It seems like it's probably, and I side with Rittenhouse generally based on what I've seen. I'm okay with the DA saying, we should probably try this case uh, in trial. We should probably try this in front of a jury or whatever and see what happens. I, I think that's an okay, okay decision to make here. Okay, so what, let me let me back up. Let me go macro, and now you have my undivided attention. I should have known that I couldn't play Titanfall 2 while talking to uh, Destiny, but, you know, okay. It's, it's okay. So, all right, so you have my undivided attention. Let's see if we can back up, and I can present my argument in a way that's not disagreeable. And let's also see uh, if I can, and by the way, like, you don't, obviously you don't have to fucking agree with me, um, but let me see if I can at least make my point so they're coherent, okay? So the, the, the point of that I'm trying to make right now is that is that basically like yeah you're right grand juries make decisions all the time about cases and then on top of that like the uh you know grand juries make decisions state attorneys make decisions and this is already part of our system as it exists now the combative system seems to have worked so far uh so why don't we just keep going with the combative system i i, I understand you so far okay. my problem is that there's a bunch of fucking sifting lawyer bullshit that's fucking out there that doesn't align and like if you want me to give you a fucking example the the csi effect is like a, a very clear example of something that's typically allowed in court but it's pure muddying the water bullshit and basically what it is it's where a defense attorney says hey uh why didn't you fingerprint the ceiling why didn't you fingerprint the wall why didn't you fingerprint this why didn't you fingerprint that why didn't you dna fucking swab this why didn't you dna fucking that and it literally could be a fucking video camera of the person actually like shooting somebody or actually stealing something with like holding their fucking passport up to the fucking camera and the defense attorney is still going to use the csi defense where they're just muddying the waters with like fucking forensic bullshit in in the in the rare or actually probably not rare chance that they can muddy the water in order why, to okay. make jurors who why, don't, who why do don't they, understand fucking yeah. forensics. Why do they do this? Why do they do, do this, this though? Why do they why do this? Why do they do this? Because they're because they're trying to give their fucking they're trying to give their clients as aggressive as a fucking defense as they can. It kind has of. To do with but the what can, can we think of one positive outcome of a system that encourages a defense to be that onerous? Okay, but but okay, but then here's the thing. This is where I was backing up because I. Well, no, I wait. What do you think my answer is going to be to that? Why do you think that? What what can we think of? What is one potential positive side effect uh, for the defense being that onerous? Uh, onerous. What you mean that shitty? Yeah. You got to tell me, buddy. <laughs> It's to make sure that cops do their fucking jobs and in, in acquiring uh -huh. all of the evidence and doing everything as well as they can, as properly as they can, to support the claims that they're making. That's the reason why. So we if it is, the cops are fucking stupid. We know this shit. Okay, I say on. this as a cop. That, hold on, like, wait, wait, wait. That's fine. If you think cops are fucking stupid, that's fine. I don't want my life ended though because of a stupid fucking cop. I need to make sure that the policies are in place such that the evidence uh, required to convict me beyond a reasonable doubt because of the state is going to bring charges uh -huh. to me, okay? 
I want to make sure that those charges can be proven in front of a jury of my peers or in front of a judge, if that's how they decide to rule it, beyond a reasonable doubt that I committed that crime. So if that means you need to collect and dot all your I's and cross all your T's and you're getting the right finger, then fucking then that, then so be it, right? If you run okay, into cool, a problem cool, over cool, and over cool, again cool. where a defense is able to say, well, hold on. Now they said that they found this and this, but they didn't fingerprint that or that. This could have belonged to somebody else, right? If that is the case, if they can if they can cause a reasonable doubt to arise in the minds of the jurors, then you failed your job. You didn't make your case. That's the whole point of making your case as a prosecutor. You have to, if you're convicting of criminal charges. All right, so let, let's let's see here, uh, be, because basically this is where uh, I thought it was actually really interesting that we kind of got into this conversation, uh -huh. because what I'm proposing is not a bilateral disarmament. I'm proposing a unilateral disarmament on behalf of the state where the prosecution cannot use muddying the water tactics that are false, like basically, like I, I can walk you through them, but we know they're bullshit. We know they're bullshit based off of what we do every single day. We know they're bullshit based off of law enforcement experience. We know they're bullshit based off of DA experience. If you know they're bullshit, they're then- playing, with, No, we know that they're fucking bullshit because they're playing the same game that the fucking defense attorneys are playing. And that's like, that's what's like so fucking insane to me. Okay, you're going like, to have to give me like a, 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 we would have to go through like a solid example of like, this is just bullshit. <laughs> okay, all right. So, so let, let's go through a solid example of bullshit and let's use Kyle as an example because, you know, it's pertinent, right? Okay, sure. So, so basically with the, um, the prosecutor asking, mm -hmm. well, the engagement distance on a pistol could be like greater than 15 to 20 feet and Grosskritz was pulling his pistol, uh -huh. is it possible that you, you know, you think that, like, uh, he would have engaged you from a further distance and he was just trying to apprehend you? We already know why that's fucking bullshit. We're talking about reaction times that are down to a few fucking seconds. We're talking about reacting or realizing a threat, seeing the threat, recognizing the threat, and responding to the threat. That's what we're talking about. So basically having three people kicking you in the fucking head and a skateboard being fucking smashed against your skull and being down on the ground and having just committed a homicide and having your adrenaline spiked out of your fucking head and having somebody fucking pulling a gun on you shooting his fucking bicep off is a perfectly acceptable fucking response to somebody yeah. pulling a pistol with I... all of those fucking variable factors whereas the implication from that statement is that it was an irrational action that it, there there was not support for it that uh you know basically um you know who was it kyle I, okay okay, I, I, hold on, wait, okay because this is all worthless okay? Wait, okay, I, I understand okay. this is mm -hmm. we're, we're, i don't i just think we're never gonna cross this bridge I agree with everything that you just said, 100%. Mm -hmm. It sounds like something the defense should say when the prosecution rests. <laughs> That's, I agree with everything you're saying, 100%. Everything you just said is, I agree with, 100%. But the prosecutor's job is not to account for that. Their job is to make the strongest case possible to the jury. The defense's job is to bring up everything you just said and say, well, hold on. Could my client have ascertained a threat of a handgun aimed at him in, you know, one second? Is that really his responsibility? Is that, is that possible to do it? Should self-defense, um, you know, should, should, the bar, should the bar be that high that every single person has to be like a fucking Navy SEALs like person in a situation? Like how reasonable is it that he felt like his life was threatened? I think that's a totally, that's, that's a good line of uh, argumentation for the defense to go down. But the prosecution shouldn't stop just because like, yeah, you know what? I think that the, the defense could argue this pretty well. So, no, of course not. Your goal is to prosecute. But I think that's just what we're gonna disagree on. Like, I, I don't, I don't actually disagree okay, but, with but any I, of the arguments you're saying. I just, I think that it's not the, it's not the prosecution's okay, job to be concerned but, but, with it. Okay, but okay, but this, this is where I got something else that I think we can tear into a little. Bit. Okay. So, so here, here's the thing. You're using ideals in order to guide your arguments. I appreciate that. I'm an idealistic person. I, I like ideals. But we, we have to work in pragmatics and we have to deal with the system that we're given. And what you have when you're talking about like the state's attorney's office, particularly like defense attorneys, uh, you know, public defenders and all that kind of stuff. You know, if you're like, hey, well, your public defender should just be smart and he should be just be smart enough in order to fucking bring that up during the fucking cross. Okay, cool. Sweet. I think we could probably bring any state attorney's office, both prosecution and fucking defense, and they would literally say like, hey, I was an idiot. I got a $200,000 education. I thought criminal law was sexy. And then I started making 50 grand a fucking year. I can barely pay my bills. My caseload is quintuple what a normal human being can deal with. And frankly, I'm walking from court to fucking court. And half the time, I don't even know who my fucking clients are before we start fucking arguing because the system is so overburdened. As a result, I have probably made some flubs, especially early on in my career, where there were arguments that I just didn't know about. And there were things that were obvious to me now that just aren't that I 
had to learn. And as a result, there's people who are in jail right now who probably wouldn't be if I had a little bit more time in order to look over my cases and if the system wasn't so fucking, you know, basically swamped up to the ass. And then on top of that, here's the thing. This is not just my experience because God damn it, I hate defend. Whenever somebody uh, tells me like they've been arrested, normally because I'm a fucking cop, right? Or an ex-cop. I assume that they have fucked up super hard because in order to get a cop to pay attention to you, chances are you fucked up somewhere, right? But there's still people who, despite fucking up in some regards in their life, are not bad people, but they have been fucked by the system. And this is where I'm asking you, like, from a prosecut uh, prosecutorial standpoint, should it be the ideal that just because we've set up a combative system that a prosecution team will use muddying the waters and basically bullshit tactics that have nothing to do with state statutes in order to achieve a conviction? Yep. <laughs> That's just, I, I, I think that's what their job should be. Yeah. But I mean, like, okay. I, I understand our disagreement, I, but. Hey, listen, you fucking own it. So, I mean, I can't bitch too fucking hard, I guess. Like, you know, you're just like, yeah, yeah, that's what I think. If I, I like, if I had a loved one, if my kid got murdered by, you know, some dude and this guy was crazy yeah. or whatever, and it seemed pretty obvious, I wouldn't want the, the prosecution. I wouldn't want the state with that case mm -hmm. to be taking into account the mental well-being of the person that they're trying to get a conviction about. That's not their job. That's the defense's job. I want the state to be representing the strong. Like we say the state, the state, the state, like the state is an adversary of the public. The state ideally exists to enact the will and enforce the laws that the public put on the books, right? These laws don't exist. They're not handed down from the state to us. We vote on the representation that enacts these laws in these states. So these states ideally, and in our democratic system, I believe are a direct representation of the will of the people. And then we vest the power in the state to enforce law enforcement in terms of arresting people and our judicial system in terms of bringing down you know, punishments and convictions. So yeah, I think that the state should be building the strong Strongest case as possible, even if that means whatever you call muddying the waters, whatever, whatever they have to do to con get convictions, that's the state's job. Yeah, I, I, I that's how I, I feel. But okay, but the, so I, I'm, you've already owned it, so I'm not trying to like you know walk you down into anything. You can walk me down as many as you want. Go for it. <laughs> Okay. All right. All right. So, so I'm just trying to say, like, you you understand that what you're owning, basically, uh, as far as I understand it, is if there's a weak case that um that that doesn't because this is this is what we talk about this is what we talk about when, when we talk about like the death penalty cases where people were exonerated this is what we talk about where like people got false confessions this is what we talk about where there's like there was like evidentiary misconduct on behalf of the state because all they're trying to do is achieve convictions and no, 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 hold on, view, hold on. they, they view uh, their jobs the way okay. that you view them. okay everything okay, you're about to say is a waste of time please. okay okay i i don't approve Rude. I don't, when you start saying like evidentiary mishaps or whatever, I don't approve of breaking the law. So, so stop mm -hmm. bringing up as an example, like, okay, well, what you're saying is like these prosecutors break the law. Okay, if they're breaking the law, that's breaking the law. It's not, it shouldn't happen. I don't think it's a good thing, okay? So in cases where people are making stuff up or, or doing mishaps or things that result in mistrials or breaking the law, whatever, that's not good. I don't support that, obviously, by definition. I can't be here on one side arguing in favor of the law and saying I support people to break the law. So I don't, I don't agree with that. So don't bring that well, up as okay, an example, so right? What I agree is that the prosecution should do everything they can within the confines of the law to get a conviction. Mm -hmm. That's their, that's literally their job. And then the job of the defense is to be as scumbaggy as possible to do whatever the fuck they can to raise whatever doubt they can to say, well, hold on. Well, maybe if this happened, you know, it's not unlikely, but it's possible that this happened instead. That's the job of the defense. And I believe that both sides should function as that way. And then hopefully somewhere in the middle, we negotiate our truthful propositions or whatever. Okay, but you do you do understand in reality that like there are cases absolutely where there's only circumstantial evidence, and as a result, they paint like grand fucking narratives off of super weak shit in order to obtain. Okay, hey, firstly, right? circumstantial. Hold on, not so much like most evidence uh -huh. is circumstantial. Circumstantial evidence is awesome. Okay, what? I don't, th this idea that circumstantial evidence, DNA is circumstantial evidence. You understand that, right? That, like we very rarely do you have direct evidence of a crime. DNA that you get off the scene of a crime does not tell you who did anything. That is, D all DNA is circumstantial evidence. Okay, so. So number one, that's not a bad thing. Number two, it doesn't change anything I said prior to that, right? There are going to be bad convictions where it happens where somebody shouldn't have. Sure, but you know what? There have also been people that walk that shouldn't have either as well, right? O.J. Simpson is a good example. George Zimmerman is probably a good example of this. Um, that one crazy lady that fucking buried her two kids in a trash can is a good example of this, right? It happens, sure. There are mistakes on both ends, but like, what are you going to do? You're never going to invent a, a justice system that's perfect. Sure. All right, we understand that. Sorry, So yeah, or we... No, that's fine. The um, no, it, it, it's okay. I, I think I think you actually understand me. I think you know I just haven't moved yet at all. The 
Uh, yeah. So, so basically, just to summarize my argument, then it's the uh -huh. fucking. It's literally like unilateral disarmament on behalf of the prosecution, where they don't do this muddy in the water bullshit. And what, what, I'm not trying to be vague here. I think everybody who's been watching the Kyle Rittenhouse, uh, the Kyle Rittenhouse trial in particular, they they've seen exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. Where they're asking fucking insane questions. They're implying things with their fucking arguments. The judge himself has stopped the case a couple of times in order to yell at the fucking prosecution because they're being. Shady as fuck stop. With what wrong. Stop. 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 Wrong. What you said was absolutely wrong. Okay. The judge uh -huh. is not stopping the prosecution because they are muddying the waters or they're asking bullshit questions. Blah blah. blah. That is absolutely not the case. The judge mm -hmm. has stopped when and one time was when an irrelevant line of questioning that was already declared not okay that the that the prosecutor didn't clear ahead of time with the judge went down. Another time was when he believed that he was violating the Fifth Amendment rights of the defendant. That was a time when it was stopped. And then I think a third time it was questioned where. A, a potential other um, Fifth Amendment right was being brought up about somebody uh, retaining an attorney, but the judge actually said that line of question was okay. So the judge has not stopped the case saying, oh, you're asking bullshit questions about a psychological state. That is not true. He stopped related to other things that he should be stopping for that aren't related to asking bullshit questions. You don't, okay, okay, okay. Maybe I'm a little bit more nefarious-minded than you. You don't think that was intentional on behalf of the prosecution? Um, it's, that, it's not my job to say. I, I, don't, I, don't, I truly don't know that. It might be okay. the case that he thought my that it was okay. It might be the case that maybe you know he is trying for a mistrial or whatever. I, which I maybe I I, I no, can't no, I can't. No. I don't even I don't I don't even think he's trying for a mistrial. There there's things that you can do right. Like there's things where you can like play in the in the shallow area right. Where you can basically introduce information and then, like at some point when you fucking uh, sure. you know when you introduce the information you can't really like close the box again. Yeah, and so you know what down, the, judge, goes, the judge the judge actually the, line the, of judge, the judge the judge specifically the judge already prohibited the judge already when he goes. Down I, I, Why are you, what are you arguing? Hey, you're a sexy bitch. You're a sexy bitch. I get it. We, right. we're, no, no, hold so on. Anyway. I, uh -huh. The judge already agrees with you. You don't have to make this argument. The judge literally explicitly mm -hmm. said, I don't think you're acting in good faith. So if you're looking for somebody to agree with you, the judge already agrees with you. He said, I don't think you're acting in good faith. Anymore. So it might be the case that he's not. But that's not something that I concern myself with trying to figure out all day because you you never you, you can't truly know the answer to any of those questions. So there's no point, right? Okay, So, th but this is, this is my point is that if you went to the prosecutions, if you went to the state attorney's office and you said, hey, listen guys, we're fucking done with this muddy in the waters bullshit. You can only present fucking clean cases. Every single one of your evidence <laughs> has to, hold up, hold up. Just let me fucking outline it before Does, you think you're, you just, fucking You keep using this term muddying the waters and it's like totally begging the question. Like, I don't know what you mean by that. If you're talking about breaking yes, rule of law, I've already described it four fucking times. No, but you like, keep like, you keep intermingling these terms of muddying the waters, where you might mean throwing everything at the wall to see what sticks, which is fine, versus doing things that are illegal, which is uh, not fine. I don't know what you mean. You say muddying the waters, like that. Okay. that you keep going back so, because on one of those things, I'm totally okay with. If you want to throw as many arguments as you want to the wall that sticks, then fucking go for it. That's your job as a prosecutor or a defense. And, but if you're talking about and, breaking like rule of law or breaking the due process or whatever, that's not okay. Like violating rent or something. Okay, yeah, then okay. can you assume the good one for our line of argumentation? Just well, no, because you keep bringing up the bad one. So I don't want to defend the good one and then have you bring up an example of the bad one and make it sound like I'm defending we... I'm defending judge or uh, lawyers that are breaking the process, that are working okay. against the law. I don't support I that. Think... Okay, I think I've only brought up breaking the process once, and that was like fucking eight minutes ago. I think like the three things that I have brought up is basically this been this fucking prosecutor being a fucking asshole, which like according to you falls within the fucking rules of the game. Okay, no, so no, no, I'm but there's talking no, about the thing that you think are part of rules of the game. So no, but that's not true. About? Calling into question somebody's right to retain an attorney is not okay, and the judge called him out on that one it time. Is Fucking first year lawyer would fucking know that. So do you think that was intentional or do you think the prosecution is just uh oh they just flubbed up a little bit? I don't, like do you think I don't, it was intentional? I don't I'm not I don't have enough trial experience to know that because the second time oh, he did that He did uh, that. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> so Destiny, Destiny, come on. Like the fucking okay, we're we're not. I'm not on trial. He You're did that a trial. second time. On, hold on, we're on Twitch.tv, which means that you are allowed to speculate. My fucking speculation is the fact that that was done intentionally because basically any first year fucking law student would know that implying that somebody retained a lawyer is an admission of guilt. It's some kind of fucking poisoning in the well fucking first year fucking argument bullshit. It's, it's so not, are it's, you saying that a seasoned fucking prosecutor from the state fucked up or are you saying that he intentionally fucking did that and it's part of the game because you kind of got to give me an answer on that one. Trials are fluid things that aren't Fuck just that. like answer the simple question it's a simple question. i i don't know what the answer is because he did a se he did this a second right. time where he i'm gonna write this down because you you, uh... you are okay what is a direct question i'll give you a yes or no 
Okay, give me a second. So I is it whether it I think he did it intentionally? I, I truly don't know. I don't concern myself with these things. I'll say yes, he did do it intentionally. Maybe he did for a strategy. I don't know. But I do know that he brought it up a second time. And when he did it the second time, the judge let it stand because he thought that that line of questioning was legitimate. There was a, there was a witness that submitted video evidence or video testimony to the defense. And he retained a lawyer that I think that same uh, company also provided the expert witness for the defense as well. And as soon as the prosecution started asking questions about why did you retain a lawyer to submit this evidence? The judge had everybody take a quick break, and then he asked the asked the prosecutor, why are you going down this line of questioning? Is this okay? And then eventually they talked back and forth. And the judge was like, okay, yeah, this is okay. And he let it slide. Or I shouldn't say let it slide. He said this was clear. So I don't know if the first time he brought it up, if that was like a, a good thing or not. I don't know how normal it is in a self-defense case that you actually let the accused take the stand instead of just retain their right to be silent. I don't know that the answer to that. I, I'm almost positive that... When you have these cases, any case in, in a, any case in a trial could go any which way. I don't think that there is a hard rule book for like, this is what you do in here, and this is how you say in here, and this is what, I'm sure that everything, this is why we have judges and not computer programs deciding what is or isn't allowed to actually show up on the trial floor to, to, for what the jury is allowed to hear. That's all I'm saying. It's, yeah. uh, sorry. So I can, I can tell you from my, my limited but real fucking, uh, you know, court experience, that there are absolutely hard and fast rules about what you can say and when you can say it and what you can imply and what you can't imply and all that kind of shit. So let's just, let, let's just use this as a hypothetical, hypothetical, okay, for the argument. If the, if it, if the prosecution knew that by implying that a, a person, doesn't matter if they're a defendant or uh, what, whatever, like if a prosecution, let's just go with the prosecution. The prosecution knows that by bringing up whether or not somebody retained a lawyer as an, in, an implying guilt is a negative thing to do, but it's not technically illegal and it's frowned upon, but it's not, it has no bearing on, you know, the case and chances are it's going to get like objected to and shut down super quickly, especially if it's not relevant. But they use that as a tactic in order to imply the guilt of a fucking person participating in it, despite it being a well-known rule. Is that a good thing or a fucking bad thing? And is that I don't something know. that should be tolerated by the prosecution? You, the way that you frame these Use questions. it as a hypothetical! No, hold on. I can't give you a hypothetical because your hypothetical contains a logical contradiction. You're literally telling okay. me, what if they do something that's not illegal, and then at the end you say, but they know it's breaking a rule. I don't know what the fuck that means. You don't think there's a difference between like laws and mores and intentions and all that kind of stuff? I, I don't know what the difference is in a law and a rule. What, what does that mean? In court, so, rules to me sound like fucking things that are codified in law. I don't know what the difference is between a rule okay, and a so, law there. So, so, gotta... Okay, so so basically like imply, so they, they're, there's absolutely this example, okay? Um, within, um, okay, so within criminal prosecutions, it takes a lot of convictions for you, and they, they typically have to be related, in order for you to bring up a prior incident in related to that case so like typically when when you're prosecuting a crime you are not allowed to bring up any other crime or any other criminal history except for what is relevant to that case are you sure me so far but however okay. that uh -huh. relevancy you i i, I i'm Go trying ahead. to understand i'm trying to attack you i think that my impression is you. that big boy. you're i think that you're using words that you think are way more solid that are actually incredibly flimsy or need to be argued about. When you use, for instance, when you say- Which ones? Relevance. Relevance is not going to be a hard and fast rule. It is probably going to be something that attorneys will go into judges' offices and argue about before court. This is relevant. This is relevant because of this reason, this reason. And they're gonna fight over the relevancy of that thing. It's not just gonna be like, uh -huh. oh, this is relevant because it crosses off boxes one or two. No, it's probably gonna be, so whether or not Rittenhouse saying he wanted to bring an AR-15 to a shoplifting thing early or whatever, him saying that, whether or not that's relevant, I don't know. That's probably something I'm gonna guess that a lawyer has to argue in front of the judge before it goes to, not in front of the judge, but go to the judge's office to argue about whether or not he can pursue that line of question before the trial actually happens. That's not just like a, oh, well, we checked off the box, so it's relevant. Sure, uh, all right. So let, let me continue down criminal history because I, okay. I think this could be used as an example. Um, so, all right. So criminal history typically cannot be brought up with it. Like, like in, in but who, oh, damn it. All right. Let me, let me just focus on this because we can get into a debate. Yeah. About like this. if somebody's on trial for like a okay. domestic abuse, mm -hmm. you can't bring up like they shoplifted 15 times when they were like 14 or something, probably. Right. 
Yeah. And then, but but I think that part of the frustration, especially with like lower level uh, lower level offenders who don't have a significant amount of criminal history or whatever, you still can't bring up like related crimes. Like if it's like a second or third offense burglary, I don't think you're allowed to bring up the prior burglaries. And then when it comes to like drug trafficking organizations or whatever, I think you have to hit like a certain threshold before you're allowed to bring up like previous convictions for drug trafficking or previous convictions for drug dealing or previous dr convictions for uh, you know uh, possession and all that kind of stuff. And that's part of that's part of the the frustration from from the law enforcement perspective is the fact that it feels oftentimes like in the the judicial system particularly the courts or whatever we're fighting with a hand behind our back because we know so much more than the jury knows and we know so much more than the fucking the courts know right sure but, that's good i'm glad you should have to obtain but, evidence in a good way you should have to be able to prove it in a, in a way that like that's cops not are my gonna, point. okay that's not my point. sure i know but i'm just saying that like, you're presenting this as like a boohoo thing that's absolutely good there needs to be a process by which dude cops could be a uh, million times I'm, more effective in this country scene, that's not even my point okay gotcha i just but you frame things in a very pro cop way and i'm telling you it's good that it exists that way there's a cop, lot of things what that, do you want okay go <laughs> for it okay sorry i'm just go ahead yep i'm an ex-cop do you want me to be taking a fucking steaming duke down their fucking throats like you know what do you expect from me no buddy? no i understand so, what you're saying but i just want to make sure you understand okay. i like i understand i'm willing to bet that there are a ton mm -hmm. of convictions that if we could like fucking pull a memory out of a cop's mind that we could get because they saw something that is just 100% proves a case or whatever, but like they don't have the, they didn't go through the proper channels or way to gather that evidence to make it like admissible in court. So we don't get that conviction. I'm sure that happens, but there are good sure. reasons why we do things the way that we do. Cause we don't want to encourage but, okay, cops but, to try to gather evidence in an illegal manner but, because it's going to lead to a whole bunch of violation of our rights and, and liberties, which God bless America. We have a whole bunch of, okay, go ahead. Okay. We, we, we agree here and this isn't, getting to my point okay. My, okay so let me get to my point my point is let's say that you have a pro, uh, a prosecutorial attorney and uh basically like every single case that they go into they bring up the the person's previous criminal conviction despite it being barred from the court okay but they do that knowing that because if they get it into the jury's minds that they have a prior criminal conviction that's related to this one, then that's going to increase the increase the likelihood with which the jury is going to view the client, the, the defendant with prejudice. Right. Mm -hmm. But every single time the judge goes, hey, you can't say that shit. And then they shut it down and then they throw it out. But that that uh, that prosecutor keeps using it as a tactic, not because they actually think that it's going to like build good cases or present good evidence or get good convictions, but just because they know that even though their line of questioning is going to get shot down by the judge and is going to get objected to by the other person, they can still poison the minds of the jurors before that line of questioning gets shot down. Are you tracking me so far? Sure. But at this point, wouldn't so it eventually just get a mistrial or like... Well, that that's kind of my point is that can't we we've already probably criminal history like it, I think if the, it was a repeated pattern and it wasn't like a new person who was making this fucking mistake, then they probably eventually would be like, hey, you're fucking with the system. We're declaring a mistrial because you fucked this up. Right. Yeah. But what but what I'm saying is there are additional behaviors that you could bar including like you know prejudicing fucking witnesses based off of information that was already previously ruled inadmissible and then also fucking arguing for fucking like against things that have nothing to do with statute but imply guilt based off of like an ignorance of like physiological reaction during stressful no, stop. events oh god dude you're <laughs> i i hold, okay. hold on hold on you got you got to bear down on that because you keep rolling your fucking eyes whenever the, i the say problem that shit, is because I have you no keep idea rolling, why the, the fuck you're rolling your because eyes you keep, when, you, when you i say keep, that shit. you keep rolling Rolling all these things together like they're the same, okay? Doing Don't things. Break one of them apart. What do you want? I can't break them. I've told you multiple times that you can't rule these. You can't roll these things together. If you want to talk about doing things that the judge knows you shouldn't be doing, that that, mm -hmm. that you've been told not to do, things that have to be stricken from the record, okay? That is a different thing than uh, talking about or misrepresenting psychological states. Those two things are different things. They're, they're, so it's let, a different let, classification let's of things. Let, let's split let's split it apart okay because the way that I, i'm trying to set control and then i'm trying to set the thing that i'm trying to control so if i'm not explaining myself well then i'm sorry I, okay it's just okay you can, it's like it's like if i if i use the word manipulate is it okay to manipulate a partner and then i say mm -hmm. here's what i mean when i say manipulation 
Uh, like I buy them ice cream when they're sad. I give them hugs and talk to them. Um, we spend a lot of time together and we love each other. Is that I mean, type of manipulation okay? And you're like, okay, yeah, that's fine. It's like, okay. So you think it's okay when I manipulate my partner by like hugging them, threatening to murder them, they don't believe it, blah, blah, blah. And then they're like, wait, 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 hold on, wait. No, not that type of manipulation. And you're like, wait, what do you mean? And like, wait, when you said manipulation, it sounded like you were talking about like just doing things in a normal relationship, not threatening to fucking kill them. You're like, oh, okay. But then every time we revisit the word manipulating the argument, you keep trying to muddy all those things together. You keep trying to say like, oh, when I say manipulate, I mean like threaten to rape or kill them and then also do nice things to them. That's what you keep doing when you say like, do you think the prosecution should be able to do this thing? And when you say this thing, you keep mixing in like things that are breaking the rules of the court. Hey, Destiny, I love you, but I've already asked you. I made that point like 20 fucking minutes ago. I haven't made it again. You just and said you it. That's why we stopped it doing this. No, just... I fucking didn't. And I'm trying to describe to okay. you what I fucking so, okay. mean so you can understand okay, it better. Okay, describe Holy it again. Shit. Describe it again. Sorry, uh, okay. 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 Holy shit. <laughs> Okay. So, all right, so let me, let me, okay, and, and by the way, let me just, like, set what I'm describing, because, uh -huh. like, basically you're saying, like, you're rolling your eyes at a part that, like, I don't know if you don't think it is understandable, or, like, I'm, just, I'm not sure Just explain, when you say, is. what what should the prosecution not be allowed to do, what are those things, okay? Just okay. okay, so, so I would, I would say, like, basically, um, implying guilt through, like, uh, retaining a lawyer would be a good example of what I was talking about, if that was done intentionally, right? then another another one of them would be um implying guilt based off of like physiological responses that are not humanly possible based off of like relatively commonly known knowledge in this field okay so that would be my second gotcha so, like so, can we can we can we focus on that one which okay sure but those two things you brought up, I would say those two things are worlds apart. Those aren't the same thing. Those are those two things. Can we, can aren't we separate matter. them and focus sure. on the second one? Yeah. Okay. The second one, I think, is fine for the prosecution to do. That's fine. That's their job. You okay? So, so just to clarify, you think it's okay for the prosecution to basically imply things that are known to be bullshit within whatever? The if fuck they're you known to be bullshit, industry. then the jury's going to side against them. Sure. But, uh, but jurors are fucking cows like what are we talking about when you here? say x uh, is known to be you're implying uh -huh. some sort of commonality of experience between all of mankind known to no. be implied that's what known no. to be means or what do you mean when okay. you say known to be and I, and I said and i said known to be within the industry and i'm specifically talking about people who prosecute crimes and people who basically like enforce law in criminals okay. this is all it's very small world then can't you and just so, bring an expert witness in to testify on behalf of that that this is known so we're gonna bring fucking it in but then every single time this is this is part of the problem with why like allowing this shit to go is because basically what you have is you have a bunch of fucking lawyers with really shitty fucking tactics doing really shitty things during court proceedings because they know that it's effective and because they, the other lawyers because there's a limited amount of time and energy within the system they know that they can't call an expert fucking witness to go over like the psychology and physiology of like stress during like mutual combat okay it Every sounds like if you were gonna do to fucking imply this shit it like it sounds pretty to, me, obvious to me if you were gonna have a self-defense case where somebody gets fucking killed that seems like the most important expert witness that you'd want to have on hand i'm pretty sure they actually had these people on hand talking about combat experience and stress responses that seems like the most important witness that you would always have on hand you, okay, do you think public defenders are going to do that every single fucking time? Do you think they have the time or the this is a to do If that? you want to talk about whether or not public defense is well enough funded or not, that's a separate argument. I agree with you, it's probably not. No, but, but that's a separate but, argument. But is if you preclude the fucking argument, then you don't even have to... Like, I want to increase the funding for fucking law enforcement and the court systems and all that kind of stuff. But you wouldn't have to if you precluded these arguments because you said, Hey, stop with your malarkey. This is known malarkey. You are no longer, as a prosecutor, allowed to do malarkey. Yeah, but if and you if you identify open systems over time, if you like, preclude I don't know all why. these arguments, then you're going to let convictions go that you would have otherwise had because now you're handicapping the prosecution because some people can't afford good public defenders. Like, wait, fucking ten minutes ago, didn't you just tell me that that's the prosecution's problem and that they should make clean fucking arrests and clean prosecutions and clean uh, clean? Convictions? Yeah, but you're trying to tell me that the prosecution can't use everything they can now. They're limited by whatever malarkey means. Yes, because because okay, I. I know it, malarkey is not just my smell test, okay? It's not just something that, like, I'm pulling out of my fucking ass. Oh, hey, it Connor absolutely thinks this is, is. It's 
Bullshit, Destiny. Bullshit. Like, no, there's fucking things that are known within this fucking system. And I like, if you give me an opportunity to fucking explain them, then I can fucking explain them. So when it comes to like, when it comes to like reaction time, we just went over this maybe like 20 minutes ago. Reaction time in, in during violent confrontations is known. The reliability of fucking what people say when they're under stress is known. These are like sociological, psychological, and criminally fucking studied subjects for the better part of like two centuries. We know what people do under stress. We know what kind of shit they can be up to. We know what they're capable of in a fight because we've studied it. And to, to have a fucking state's prosecutor implying that a fucking 17-year-old kid who's getting his fucking head kicked in intentionally made the choice to blow off somebody's bicep because he fucking felt like it? That's malarkey, Destiny. It's fucking malarkey. Damn. Well, if it is malarkey, then the defense should be able to show it. Easy peasy. That's like an uh, easy but case for them. People are idiots, Destiny. God damn it! <laughs> like, fuck. Okay. Uh, I, I think we just. I know. I fundamentally disagree on this, but you know what? That's okay. Okay, I know. I know. Hey, hey, we finally found something that we could yell at each other about. So I'm happy we finally got here. You know? It's been. It's all. It's all been holding hands and. Do you want to argue with uh? Do you want to argue with Pisco about this? Yeah. Fuck yeah. Bring on Pisco. Pisco. Although Destiny, just yeah. just be warned, like Pisco and I are fucking oil and water, dude. So like, you're not you're not even gonna fucking talk on your own show. It's well, I'm not. We're here to talk. If you guys are gonna argue, you guys can go argue with each other. Pisco, if you want, feel free to join. All right. Oh. Is that your chips or his? That's my chips. Okay. Pisco, you had twenty seconds. When are you, when are you moving into Miami? Um. Please go. Why are you calling me? Do you not have perms on my Discord? When am I moving so to Miami? Um, yeah. I don't know. Like at the end of the month. Why? Do you live there? I'm in Florida. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Are you in Florida or are you in Miami? What do you mean? I'm in Florida. I'll drive. Don't worry. Oh wait. Can... Go to my disc. Do you have perms again in my Destiny's Room Discord? I don't. Okay. Never mind. I'm just gonna add them to this. I... Hold on, Jesus, you guys making me type all this fucking bullshit. Oh. Yeah. Hello? How you doing? Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. I'm really, really disappointed in you, Connor. You're always disappointed in me and Pisco. You're always disappointed in me. I mean, Tell me. I Start off by saying, you know, I really enjoy our talks, and I think that, you know, you and I eventually, you know, we get into it sometimes. But I think like this has been the biggest combination of disgusting and stupid points that you have ever brought to bear in a conversation. And it's some of what you've told me before, but you've just been wrong on so many things. Um, and I and I really want to sort of take you to task on on whether or not you even like believe in our constitutional system.